Hey, I'm Sarah, and on this channel, we share how to create realistic textures in nature and also document the process of what it's like to start up your own art business. It is another day at the mural site. We are uh, pretty stoked about the amount of progress made thus far. So we have finished the transition in here from the lighthouse scene to the Purple Valley Lookout, which is exciting. And we have a bit more to do on this uh, part, the Purple Valley part. And then we're going into the rest of the murals. So I think today we are going to use the six inch roller and try and get some of these details in. So we're gonna mix some colors for the top, more distant tree line. We're gonna get this path of the Bruce Trail in and block in some of the trees and some of the land. And then we're going to just try and get all of this part just kind of blocked in and go from there to see how far we get today. It's gonna to be another really hot day. It's already about 26 degrees. I think it feels higher, but uh, we're just gonna see how far we get today. So another thing to note is in the last video that has come out, our camera blew over and the, not the lens itself, luckily, just the filter on it smashed. So that happened yesterday and I can't get the, the filter off. So we're unsure if that lens is still usable. So today we're gonna be filming everything with our larger, more zoomed in lens. So you're gonna get an extra close up look with that. And hopefully that footage uh, turns out okay. And we may mix it up and do some time lapses on our phone as well, but they kind of die really quick. So yeah, so here we go. Because we don't have our full camera that we can set up easily for time lapse, and my phone takes it in a lot smaller chunks, uh, today is actually going to be a lot of color theory. So I'm peeling out the paint of my palette right now so we get a fresh base start. And I'm going to be mixing the colors for the background of the fall section and the background of the winter section. It's really important when you're choosing a base to do an initial wash on a wall uh, that you take certain things into consideration and we're gonna talk about it. So here I'm pouring, getting all my paint set up and you can see that I've got a yellow, white, green and a bit of water in here. So the water is just because it's so hot and by the time I mix a color, it's very thick and about to dry. So I have been boosting my paint with a little bit of water just to deal with the environmental elements. So I add about 10% extra water right off the bat. And yeah, and this made a very fluorescent green, which I was not super stoked about. So we are adding black and white to kind of desaturate it a little bit. It really was staying too bright for being such a background color as a base so I added red which is the direct opposite to it on the color wheel and uh, this looks dangerous it's like wow this is basically orange now it's not even green but it, it'll look green I promise you and we also wanted it a little bit more on the orange side because of it being fall so the background you know color is more kind of a soft yellow green orange and uh, we're gonna put it on the wall here and see what that is going to look like and I was pretty happy with this color so I decided to roll it as the base and we lost a bit of footage here so we're going to super skip ahead and boom it's done all right mid video update uh, so far we have worked on rolling the background forest color for the Bruce Trail. And now we're going into the background winter colors. So I've done the top part. Basically I've mixed kind of just a not very bright shade for the background. We're gonna be adding a lot of colors, bright fall reds and yellows on top of it. Um, but yeah, so we just kind of want the background to really blend in. And I've done these kind of horizontal, sorry, vertical lines with a highlight color at the top. And I did that as we turn into a more blue tone as well for the winter section. And basically this is kind of because there's going to be a lot of distant trees. So I wanted to start building up that, you know, forest texture, I guess, from the very beginning. We're going to play a lot with the shape of the Bruce Trail as it kind of sweeps in and then back out of the mural. And yeah, so we're gonna do a lot of forests and trees. And right now we are going to finish blocking in the more 
foreground background color of the winter section. So we kind of have this brighter, uh, very pale purple blue that we're going to use and then it's off white. So we'll still be able to add pure white on top of it to highlight snow, which will be super exciting. So that'll be on some of the trees to really highlight the snow uh, texture as we go. So yeah, this is what we have so far for the mural. And then the far end is just, it looks so good. <laughs> I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Okay, we are back at the mural site. It is the perfect day today. It is overcast, like 15, 20 degrees. And we are very, very excited as we are going to be painting the background forest in the fall and the winter sections of the mural. All right, we're gonna do the trees first. So we are working on mixing a brown color. So we have red, green, and yellow, and a little bit of water just to help it with the evaporation. And basically when I'm mixing colors, I just eyeball it. This one's turning off a bit on the red side, but we're really just using this as a first kind of layer um, of all our trees. So we're gonna have it more be a blue, brown in the winter section, kind of get that colder cast. But uh, yeah, so this is a bit more of a red brown. So we're gonna add a bit more yellow and a bit more green and a little bit of black. But here we go, we can test it. Whoops, there we go, we test it, yeah. So it's a bit too late right now, so we're gonna add a bit of yellow and a bit of black, because this is gonna be the darkest color of our trees, and then we'll highlight up from there, which will be exciting, because now we get to paint bark. So because green and red are opposite colors, if you think it's too red, you wanna add green. If you think it's too yellow, you wanna add a bit of blue. Well, purple technically, but our blue's a bit more purple anyway. So now this has a bit more of a green cast to it, which I think is perfect for what we want to try and do. Yeah, so that matches that top shade a little bit better. And when you're mixing colors, I'd always recommend mixing a small amount first and then making a large amount um, after a while. Uh, I always mix in really large amounts here just because, you know, after so many years of painting, you really do develop a bit of an intuition about mixing colors and a confidence that comes with being able to mix larger batches of paint and guess the amounts. And it's just a practice skill over time of how you know paint interacts with each other. And every time I change paint mediums, like from working with house paint here to working with the paint in my studio, you really have to recalibrate that effort as well. So just start mixing in smaller amounts um, and that way you save a lot on uh, paint and also save any mistints. You know, you can put them in other containers and keep it around for a while. And yeah, I always save paint. And then I have a ton of little tiny containers that I used to mix. Anyway, what else you see me doing here is I am pretty much exclusively painting all these trees with a roller and then a smaller brush just to clean up the edges. So with the roller, I am rolling out big trees, but I'm also just stamping the smaller trees in there with the roller on the side, which really wasn't a technique I thought about doing until, you know, the six inch roller just gets paint in all of the small dips of the concrete so much easier than brushes do. So with brushes, it would just have taken a lot longer to get that amount of paint really deep into these cracks. And it takes a lot of paint to saturate rollers. So I wanted to keep using it. So I am constantly stamping all these smaller trees and then I'm going back with a uh, sword brush to just try and really clean up the ends of them and uh, get any other deeper cracks that didn't get it with the roller. We're starting with smaller trees and then making them wider as we go to the front. All right, I hadn't added my Instagram handle to this side yet and I've gotten requests to do so. So we just spent some time doing some lettering, which is really exciting. And now we're gonna go all the way back to the other end and finish painting more trees. 
Now that lettering was really hard to do, so I kind of just skipped over to it as a break from this because this was really easy on my body to paint and, uh, well, relatively easy. But yeah, lettering really low down was difficult, especially because I was about five months pregnant, four months pregnant at the time of filming this. And uh, yeah, but anyway, we're back to the trees and I really wanted to play around with different you know, sizes of trees to get some variation here. I wasn't sure at the time which animals I was gonna put in the winter section. This was the least planned part of the mural. I didn't really have a main star of this section yet. And I had a couple of votes on Instagram to determine which animals were gonna be featured here. So that was kind of fun. And uh, yeah, but just cause I was setting up the stage for the wildlife I wanted to feature, we were focusing in on having a bunch of different depths of trees in case I wanted to do some smaller animals on closer trees that they would all kind of fit within the perspective of the mural still. So it took a lot of time to paint all these trees and especially it took even more time to add the texture to them because this is just the initial wash layer and it basically took almost a full day of doing this. And I kept the same brown tone between the fall and winter section as a base and then when I'm going to do my other details, I really, uh, I really changed the color tone of the fall colors and the cooler winter colors at that stage. So this is just to get, you know, quick brown on the painting and be efficient with it. And uh, mixing colors takes so much time. So if you can just use one color and power through a bunch, that's kind of what we're doing here in trying to design different elements. All right, here we go. It's the end of the day. We have successfully done a bunch of trees today, which were a bit of a challenge just because you gotta really, you know, get all of the paint in all of those lovely nooks and crannies of the cement. Then we have done our path. So other than like a few spot areas over here, which we'll redo when we're gonna put plants and stuff in, and uh, we'll paint this log up, we have paint everywhere, which is super exciting to be in this stage of the project. So I'm really happy with what we accomplished this week. And this is going to conclude our video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. We are going to end with some clips from next week's video where we continue painting the mural. So I hope you enjoy this sneak peek footage and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the video next week. We'll see you soon.